here we are in the 21st century. We were promised jetpacks and flying cars, and we got cell phones and laptop computers instead. What happened? The writers of the science fiction pulps and comic books thought that we'd have a revolution in energy necessary for jetpacks and death rays, when what we got was a revolution in information. SolidWorks can help you design a better robot for any student project. Check it out at SolidWorks.com slash robotics. You've got a new book coming out, it just came out last week, The Amazing Story of Quantum Mechanics. Could you please tell us a little bit about what's in that book and also what inspired you to write it? Well, the, the premise of the book is that here we are in the 21st century. We were promised jetpacks and flying cars, and we got cell phones and laptop computers instead. This information revolution was made possible by semiconductors and solid state physics, which in turn was enabled by the development of quantum mechanics. Uh, the very first science fiction pulp, Amazing Stories, was published by Hugo Gernsbeck in 1926. Also publishing in 1926, Erwin Schrodinger, who publishes the Schrodinger equation, which lays the foundation for modern quantum mechanics. So you have these two different visions of the future, one fantasy, one real, that diverge from the same point in time. A generation later, scientists developed the laser and the transistor, using the knowledge of how matter behaves provided by quantum mechanics. A generation later still, we have iPods, DVDs, cell phones, laptops, iPads, everything my teenage children would say, without which life is not worth living. None of that is possible without the transistor and or the laser, neither of which is possible without quantum mechanics. And so the premise of the book is to show, yes, quantum mechanics has these weird ideas and it's all very confusing. But one of the most amazing things about quantum mechanics is that you can use it productively and correctly even if you're confused by it. It actually presents what I describe as a working man's view of quantum mechanics. How does a laser work? What's the connection between the physics of a laser and glow-in-the-dark toys? How does a light-emitting diode work? A transistor? How does a, a USB junk drive work? And so it gives a, a foundational understanding of the world we live in. As the introduction says, quantum physics, you're soaking in it. I have a question for you about the applications now that are on the absolute cutting edge, things that people are experimenting with, the worlds of nanotechnology and materials and so on. And, you know, are, are those new uh, discoveries the possible stuff of superheroes of the future? We'll see computers pretty much in everything. Uh, they'll be embedded in everything. And so we'll live inside computers practically. Uh, thermoelectrics like solar cells, photovoltaics, that solar cells take light and convert it to a voltage. Thermoelectrics take a temperature difference and convert it to a voltage. There's a lot of waste heat underneath the hood of your car. If you could use some of that, recapture it, and use it to recharge the battery in your hybrid automobile, we might have a car of the future that won't fly, but it'll get much better gas mileage. Thanks very much for well, your participation and for you your leadership. Much. Thank you very much for your kind words. Thank you. SolidWorks can help you design a better robot for any student project. Check it out at SolidWorks.com robotics.